So in this reaction, we see that magnesium over here on the left and calcium over here on the right, both react with water in a similar way to where if you put phenolphthalein in the water, it turns pink. But although they both reacted with water, they didn't react quite the same way, did they? So they both produced the pink color they both reacted, but one of them happened a whole lot faster than the other. So the calcium was way faster than the magnesium. So we see we have both similarities and differences. Why is that? Why would we have similar reactions, but yet still a little bit different? Let's find magnesium and calcium on the periodic table. So notice they are right here. And you'll notice some key things about their location. So they are in the same column or same group, we call it. So that turns out to be pretty significant. Let's try writing out the electron configurations for both magnesium and calcium. So remember this is the S block here. And that also includes helium. Then we have the P block right here. So that's the P block. And the D block is this one. We won't use the F block, but the F block would be down here as well. So if we wrote the configuration for magnesium, we would start up here and we go 1S. So 1S count across one, two, then you go down two, S block, count one, two, go across to the P block, and you're gonna have two for the row number P, count across six, then you go back to the S block, the row number is three, that's also the principal energy level, three, S, and one, two. So that's the electron configuration for magnesium. Let's try calcium now. So calcium is gonna start off the same way, 1s2, then 2s2. Then we go down to 2p6. Then it's gonna go 3s2 and across to 3p and there's six of them, so 3p6, and then down to four, s and two. 
Do you notice anything similar about these electron configurations? Well, they always start off the same way, so that's not really significant. But the way they end, look at this. They both have two in their S sublevel. So of the highest principal energy level, they both have two electrons. Let's visualize this with a Bohr model diagram. So if we took the first principal energy level and we represented the electrons on the first ring, there's two electrons in the first principal energy level, so we would draw two dots. The second principal energy level is both of these, the 2s and the 2p. So if we represent the second principal energy level with the second ring, there's a total of two plus six electrons, so we would draw eight electrons here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then in the third principal energy level, there's a total of two electrons, so we would draw two electrons on that ring. Let's do the same now for calcium. So the first principal energy level has two electrons, so we're gonna draw two electrons on that ring. The second principal energy level includes both of these, the 2s and the 2p, so we're gonna add those together. So the two plus the six gives eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Also, the 3s and the 3p are added together on the third ring. So we're gonna have eight for those. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then the fourth principal energy level just has two electrons. So we're gonna put two represented there. Now we know that the Bohr model is not extremely accurate, but it's still useful because it's easy to draw and still helps us get a visual of what's happening. Now, if we look at these atoms here, the outer part of the atom is what's really gonna be doing the interacting. So the outside is what's gonna touch other things like a water molecule, for example, that's gonna come in here and interact with it. It's not gonna interact with the inside, it's gonna interact with the outside. So it's really the outside electrons, we call these valence electrons, that determine what kind of behaviors or properties or chemical reactions that things will have. And if you look at these, you'll find that the outermost electrons are the same. And so they end the same way. And that's why they both react in a similar way. Um, they both react with water and they both cause this pink color to form with the phenolphthalein. However, they don't react exactly the same because while they both have the same ending electron configurations or valence electron configurations, uh, they don't have the exact same configuration. Calcium has more energy levels than magnesium does, and that means that its outermost electrons are kind of loose, and they're easier to give up than those of magnesium, and that causes it to react much faster, much more vigorously than the magnesium does. So this is fundamentally why elements are placed within the same group in the periodic table. And they will also share similar properties because of that. So if we did the electron configurations for everything that follows this pattern, now helium is not technically in group two, but it has the same uh, pattern with the electron configuration. So if we did helium's electron configuration, it would be 1s2. Then if we did beryllium's, it would be 1s2, 2s2. And then if we did magnesium, we just did that one, it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. And you see we have a pattern forming here. We did calcium a minute ago, and it was 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. So if you look at the end, they always end the same way. They always have the same valence electrons. They have two electrons in their S sublevel. And sometimes we generalize this and we'll use a variable like the letter N and we'll say it's N S2. So the N variable means that the principal energy level might change 
So it will vary from one to two to three to four, but it's always going to end with two electrons in its S sublevel.